Alright guys, it's now Monday, April 8th. It's about quarter to ten in the morning. Uh, the last clips there, we were in Big Iron for the first time ever. I was able to actually get a ride and take you guys up inside Big Iron. We just had to use the field cultivator and just level out a piece where a piece of tile had been repaired so that it's ready that we can plant and stuff over it. But uh, today is a big, big day because the weather's turning around to be nice. It's going to be breezy. But uh, that's going to be the only thing that's going to stop us, really. But um, today is a big day because today we are starting field uh, field work for the spring. And uh, like I said, we have big iron hooked up to the field cultivator so we can do dirt work. We have the sprayer here. We just got uh, the spray truck back with Carol so that we have water and our chemicals ready to go. So I think we're going to jump in the sprayer. We're going to load it up with our mixture, and I think we're going to go spraying. All right, guys, it's a little after 11 now. Uh, we got the sprayer completely loaded. We got our chemicals mixed in for our bean pre application. Like I've said before, actually, there he goes right now on his first pass. You can see him going back around the pond there, spraying, testing things out. Scott's out there with the Ranger. They're testing things over, making sure everything's gonna work properly. We've already ran it with water through it, but they wanted to flush the lines make sure everything's gonna work properly. But um, anyway, like I said before, for beans we do two applications. We do a bean pre-application, and then we do a uh, post-emergence row crop sp spray application, if I could speak correctly. So pretty much, like I said, bean pre is a way to, number one, kill off the rye cover crop that's out there because if you noticed in the clips with us in big iron it looked like we were driving in a big old grass hay field almost because and with full of corn stalks and that's just because after harvest last year we spread rye seed out across the field just to serve as a cover crop and for those of you who don't know what a cover crop is it's a way to keep the soil active and keep it in place because if we just let the soil go. If we just harvested the field off, got all the crops out and just left it alone all winter long, there was gonna be, there, there, a lot of erosion can happen and a lot of degrading of the soil can happen throughout the winter months. But uh, with putting a cover crop on, it kind of just, the roots of this rye seed go down and they really just get in and hold that soil where it should be. Really helps keep the soil active, keep it where it's supposed to be. So, uh, number one, this bean pre is going to kill off the rye cover crop and it's going to add chemicals and nutrients that prepare the ground for beans. So, here in just a little bit, I'm going to go out and jump in the sprayer with Dad and we're going to go spraying. Dad is just at the bottom of this hill, back behind the equipment, working on the last of the end rows for the first pass. But I figured I'd go into a little bit of detail. First of all, here was Big Iron and the cultivator that we were in this morning. But I figured I'd go into detail a little bit on, like I said, I've kind of told you what we're spraying with our bean pre preparation. This was a cornfield and we are prepping it for beans this year. But I figured I'd go into a little bit more detail kind of on the numbers. That tank on that sprayer holds a thousand gallons of chemical fertilizer, the whole nine yards. And so with this bean pre mixture that he is spraying, we can do, we spray our application rate, we spray 10 gallons to the acre. So every acre that we go through, it does, it goes through 10 gallons of our fertilizer mixture, 10 gallons to the acre. And so a thousand gallons at 10 gallons an acre with one tank doing bean pre, we can cover a hundred acres on one tank. So, Dad is working on this first tank here. That'll cover a vast majority of this field with 100 acres. And then we will come up and do what we did before and reload, do all of our mixtures. Um, pretty much in order to make this bean pre, we have to do 25 gallons of our weed killer, 25 gallons of, uh, I guess I'll go over here to our trailer since I can't really remember the names off the top of my head. So for our big bulk tanks here, our Buccaneer 5 Extra, our Weed Killer, we do 25 gallons of that. 
This Aunt Aries, we do 25 gallon, and then we do six and a half gallon of the Agridex, or six and a quarter, I'm sorry, six and a quarter gallon of the Agridex, and six and a quarter gallon of 24D. That is our mixture. That is the, uh, the chemical rate that we put in, 25 gallons each of two kinds of the bulk tanks, and then six and a quarter gallons of the two kinds of the jugged mixture, and then the rest is water. We have a big hose that we hook up and it loads the sprayer with water. So that, that mixture of chemicals and then the rest is water. Fill it to a thousand gallons and it's good to go, ready to spray. Kind of a breezy day. I wouldn't let the, if the wind were any higher, we'd probably say no to spraying today. But it's a beautiful, beautiful day. Um, weather's starting to cooperate with us so we can get out in the field. It's also a solar eclipse day. So, uh, Supposedly about 1245-ish around here, we are supposed to have the, uh, the solar eclipse. And I think the last one was in like 2017 or something like that. And where we are, we are about 85, 86% uh, totality or coverage that we are going to have. Our maximum, I think they said, is going to be like just after 2 o'clock, like 202 or something like that. And I think it's done and out of here by like 316 or something like that. So who knows what that's gonna look like. I don't think I've ever seen a solar eclipse myself. And uh, I guess I don't have the glasses or whatever. So maybe I'll just uh, use my phone camera and record it for you guys and just look at it through my phone. So, cause they say don't act, look directly at it. You know, if you don't have glasses, look at it through something else. So, I figured I'd go through the numbers with you guys on our bean pre mixture. It's the same exact mixture that, we, that we're going to do for all of our bean pre, for all of our bean fields. We're going to go through and spray this exact mixture, those exact numbers, 10 gallons to the acre, go all the way through these fields, and then we plant. We plant the beans, and then what we do is after the beans emerge, um, so we'll row crop it, and we'll go with the rows, and we will spray another mixture but uh, I guess since in the spirit of getting ready for planting season with starting field work today, here is the 8320 with the planter. It's ready to rock and roll. It's completely done. We got the meter, we got the, the seed tubes ready to go. The meters are all in. Everything is in that we need. It's ready to pretty much put seeds in the tanks and rock and roll. Um, I know we probably still need to test it once we get uh, seed in it. We do need to make sure we test it again to make sure that our hydraulic system works from the conversion project that we did on it. If you guys missed that conversion project, go back to the video called Going Hydraulic. Um, I, we go into, I go into detail on what we do for the conversion project and kind of take you step by step, kind of show you the progress. But it should work, I have confidence. But I'm gonna just chill out up here. He's probably just gonna spray off uh, and empty that tank. And when he comes back up here to load again, we'll load and I'll jump in and go with him and I'll get some in the cab spraying footage for you guys for this year. But hope you guys enjoyed me kind of breaking down our bean pre-mixture. So uh, I guess now that I'm thinking about it, before I go to, uh, to elaborate on that a little bit, I told you guys about the chemicals that go into, you know, the sprayer for the bean pre-mixture. And I told you guys that the seeds themselves are treated as well. So if I go over here to the seed totes for soybeans, I will see on the labels that they have the 2,4-D tolerance and they have these other tolerance deals to the different things that we are spraying. Um, I assume one of these is the uh, ant aries and stuff like that that we're spraying, but the seeds themselves are tolerant to what we are spraying, so it's not like we're going to plant the seed and then it's going to kill it. You know, it won't kill the beans like it will um, the uh, the rye and the other stuff that's out there. That 2,4-D and that buccaneer and stuff, it'll that'll wipe everything out. That'll kill all the rye off and get the, you know, start from square one when it comes to what's in the ground. 
and the seeds are tolerant to that. So as soon as the seeds go in the ground, they're gonna start prospering. They're not gonna have any problems at all. So I figured I'd show you guys that, that side of things too, to show you that the seeds that we're putting into the ground are treated with tolerance so that they can handle the soil that we are creating with the chemical and uh, so that they can have the best chances of prospering. So that's kind of the big, big breakdown of uh, our bean pre-spray. I didn't mean to ramble, but I figured I'd take it as an opportunity to educate you guys on what we're spraying, how much we're spraying, and kind of what they do. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, I'm gonna say it again, we're gonna go spraying. All right guys, it's just about 12.30. Dad has folded up the boom. And looks like he's coming back up here to Carol and the spray trailer. And we're gonna get reloaded. Definitely looks gloomy with that eclipse up there. Looks weird. All right, guys, it's just after four now. We are refilled, and we actually just got done with our last few passes in the field right here around the shop. Dad is out working on a tip that was acting up. But uh, I figured I would show you guys. This is the monitor. It, I, the weird thing about the video is it flashes like that. It does. It's not doing that in real life. But this is showing how many gallons per acre we're applying and our speed is up here and it does a whole bunch of different stuff. It shows us the sections of our boom that are running but this here, if I hit my, if I go and I zoom out to page three, this you can see the whole uh, section. You can see that we are up here, we're a little green line way up there and you can zoom down, you can go down and you can see all the waterways that we have went around and there's the big one, the big creek and stuff like that. So uh, really, really cool looking stuff. This is part of the auto steer technology as well. That's all in here as well. But we are done with this field and we are going to fold up and head to the next little field. Good morning, everybody. 
it is now Tuesday, April 9th. It is 7.30. Um, I am on my way to the shop. I'm just about there. Uh, today should be another day of spraying our bean pre-mixture. Uh, we got the field behind the shop done yesterday, like I told you guys. And then we jumped down here right about where I'm at now, uh, right to my, uh, to just to the south here. Uh, we have a, our little three patch field that we got done. That's like 22, 23 acres. Uh, the field behind the shop that we did was like 173 acres. It's like 22, 23 acres for that little field, those three little patches. And then we have another field that, uh, that might be at most 60 acres that we have been doing that's in between the two fields. Um, we, we did it with, a, with what we had in the tank. So we probably only have, we, I think we did like 50, 51 acres in that field before we ran out of uh, spray. So number one priority is going to be, I'm actually going by that field now here to my south. But uh, number one priority so for first thing this morning is we're going to refill the sprayer. We're going to get it back over here and finish off those last few acres real quick. And then after that, I don't know what field we're going to go to. But uh, I figured I ought to tell you guys too that uh, I figured out, at least for now, I figured out a plan as to how this year is going to go because I haven't really talked about it because I've been worried about uh, spraying and stuff like this. But racing season's around the corner too. Uh, first race is in just under a month. Beginning of May is the first race. We have racing practice at the end of this month. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go to it or not. Depends on how much they charge per car. They had a problem with overcharging last year, so I don't know if I'm going to go to it this year or not. Racing season's around the corner, and so uh, to prepare myself for racing season, um, I've been I've been on the farm every day since I moved into my apartment, and uh, it's just I'm not a full-time guy like my dad is. So uh, I've made a plan where during the dead time in between uh, spring and fall, because I've been told that I'm pretty much a full-time guy during the spring and the fall. So uh, we still have a few weeks until we start shipping pigs, which is gonna be my big springtime work. So what I'm gonna be doing in the dead time where I'm not working on the farm is I'm gonna be going back to my grandpa's house over west and I'm gonna be doing some more construction work like I did for him a few years ago. And so uh, whatever adventures that we go on, if we end up going to a rodeo or something like that, I might take you guys along. I don't think I'm going to daily vlog, you know, the jobs and stuff that we're doing. Um, but if we happen to on a weekend or something like this or a day, grandpa just doesn't feel like working. Uh, maybe we go and do something or I go see a rodeo or something on a night or something like that. You know, I'll take you guys along. But I plan on doing that in between races and in between farming seasons. So about the middle of every month, I'll be down there working for him. And then at the end of the month, when it's getting close to race time, I'll come back, I'll get the car ready. We'll be ready to rock and roll. But we're gonna go ahead and figure out what equipment's moved and uh, we're gonna get started in the field. There goes dad with the sprayer. He just got done with the last few acres of the field we were in. I'm gonna jump in the, well, I guess I haven't said it on the videos yet, but this is now, we call this the work truck now. I about let it slip without it, without me explaining it. We call this the old gray truck, the work truck now, because we got, my dad got a new truck, a four door F250, that's just a little bit newer. So it's the, and we put the, we moved the grill from this truck over to that one. But I, I as soon as I, said, I was about to say work truck, I didn't just, it came to my mind that I hadn't explained it to you guys that that black truck is the new one for my dad. So this truck, the work truck, will be the unit that I run when it comes to going to the races. So he is gonna start on this next field, it's about 30 acres. And uh, when we get done with the end rows, I'll jump in and I'll get a little bit more spraying footage for you. And then after this 30 acre field, we're just gonna jump over and do another little field that's like, I don't know, what did he say? 50 acres, I think, something like that. So just small fields that we'll knock out. And then we'll go over to, uh, across the highway, we'll go to our big field that has a part on the south side of the road, a part on the north side of the road, 
and uh, some other parts. Oh look, there's a combine out. What are you doing with a combine on the road this time of year? But here is the field. You can see dad down there with the sprayer, just getting all of his numbers put in and he's going to get started. I'm gonna pull in here at this shop and park and just sit here. He'll do his end rows and uh, when he's done with the end rows, we will move on. We'll jump in and see what's cooking. But that is our sprayer. For those of you who don't know, I guess I haven't really gotten into detail on that sprayer this year. It's a John Deere 4830 with a 100 foot boom and the tank on it is a 1000 gallon tank. So I'll kind of explain what dad's doing right now. On the computer, uh, you have to go into the computer and enter in what field you're in and you have to uh, get it ready so that you can map it out. Because then as you spray, where you spray on the map turns blue so that when you get completely done outlining the field, doing your waterways, all that stuff, when you get completely done and you're leaving the field, you can do what I did before and go to that one page on the map. And I guess I didn't realize it, but you can zoom out and you can push the zoom out and you can zoom out and you can see the whole field. So you can kind of see, make sure you didn't miss any big patches. But this is a 30 acre field. So this won't take very long to do, especially because I don't think there's any waterways in this field. Not that I know of. I've run grain cart in this field, but we were only on this side. I forget if there's waterways up on the other side of the house or not. But dad's just getting started here. He's going to swing around and begin the end row spraying. I'll get you guys some footage from outside the cab of the spraying, and then I'll get you some footage inside the cab when we start doing our uh, down backs, when we are just going and filling in. So like I said, that's a 100 foot boom. So it covers a lot of ground in each pass. Does a really, really good job. And so what he's gonna do is he's gonna get it lined up and he is going to kick on the sprayer as soon as he gets going, here he goes. He just kicked it on, you can kind of see it misting. He's gonna do that corner and then he'll back up just to make sure, cause he doesn't want that boom to swing out over and spray the grass. Cause that's not what we wanna spray. Especially the stuff that we're spraying right now, it's got weed killer in it, so it'll kill everything. So we don't want it to kill the grass or anything on uh, the property that we don't want to spray. It. So here he goes. He's got his boom lined up. He's gonna. It's automatically gonna kick on when it gets out of range of where he has already sprayed. So there it goes. It is spraying, and he's gonna zip on by and get that end row. And he's just gonna follow the bend, keep that boom as far out as he can. I'm gonna wait here until he gets the end rows done and we'll jump in. guys it's about 12 30 uh, we are here at the cow lot we've been spraying the field just to the east the part of the field that's always the opposite crop the big section is always one crop and the little section is always the other we've been doing the small section what we call the old hay field but I figured uh, before I leave to go work construction for about a week or two I figured I would give you an update on uh, the other season that's going on calving season um, we haven't uh, had any calves yet. Here are the cows. Like I said the bulls laying down taking a break But no calves as of yet. We have had a few that have been laying up on the top of the hill kind of all on their lonesome Acting like they could calve, but no calves yet. We haven't seen the first calf yet this year But they are close. 
Um, like I said uh, before, maybe a video or two ago, um, we were preg checking them in February and they were uh, six, seven months along. So them two, three months have now passed on the soonest to deliver cows. So uh, it's getting close to having our first calf. I'm sure it'll happen when I'm gone working construction, but uh, that's just how it works. Um, we don't have that many calves coming this year uh, because we sold about half the herd uh, as bred cattle. We sold about half of them bred. So uh, I guess it's just a matter of uh, when I get back, seeing how many are on the ground. All right guys, it's now just after eight o'clock at night. I'm leaving the shop. Uh, pretty much, we ended up just getting that whole big field done. We had a whole bunch of little sections uh, after we moved, and we got uh, all the little sections done, and then we uh, jumped across the road and got the big section done. So in total today, we easily did over 200 acres once again. Um, so uh, that's all done. And the sprayer is back at the shop because it needs to be fueled up in the morning before they take it out and uh, go take take it to the next field. They're gonna take it to the field uh, just a little about a mile or so to the west, the one with the really steep hills that I was uh, telling you guys about during harvest. But uh, I think this is a good place to wrap this video up. I guess I don't know how long it's gonna end up being, but. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here because I probably won't even go to the shop tomorrow. Um, I might wait till about 8 o'clock or so to hit the road. I already have a bag packed. I just got to put my last minute necessity stuff in it. Um, but tomorrow I'll uh, load up and I'll hit the road to go to my grandpa's for about a week or so. Week, week and a half-ish. At most two weeks. And then I will come back and it'll be closer to... Uh, getting those hogs sorted and loaded and starting that and it'll be time for me to get the car in the shop and uh, do the oil change on it so it's ready to rock and roll for racing season but I'm gonna wrap this video up here so I can uh, get to work and do some construction work for the next couple weeks hope you guys did enjoy this video the start of spring field work getting the uh, sprayer out and getting it in the field. By the sounds of it, uh, probably about Friday, Saturday, uh, they're gonna pull the planter out and start planning as long as everything works. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be here for that. But even if I was, I usually don't get very much planning footage anyway, because Scott's the one that does the planning, so I really don't get much planner footage anyways. But I'll definitely keep you guys updated on how that's going. They'll start planning while I'm gone, working construction dad's gonna keep on spraying so i hope you guys did enjoy this video and all the rambling that's gone with it if you guys did make sure you guys smash the like button on this video spread the word of the channel guys thank you guys so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys